Hello, Malcolm here, and welcome. Welcome to Tuesday Teaching Tips, episode 100. We've hit the century mark. Never believed I'd record 100 of these when I began a few years ago, but here we are at number 100. And today's is entitled, How an Egg Timer Could Be Your Secret Weapon to a Super Sermon. I was having a conversation recently with a friend of mine about sermon preparation and particularly just how do we get from the original idea or text to something useful, how do we boil it all down, and as we discussed things, the image of an egg timer came into my mind and it crystallized, crystallized some of my own thinking about sermon preparation, so I'd like to share with you today the fruit of that conversation with my friend John. So. An egg timer, what is it? Well, it would look something a bit like this. If you're old school, you might still use one of these egg timers to boil your eggs where you have the sand in the top and it goes through the funnel to the bottom and after three minutes, your egg should be ready. Perhaps you use an electronic version these days. My parents had an egg timer next to the telephone when I was a child, uh, at, along with the slogan which said, Three minutes a call keeps the bill small. And that was back in the day when telephones were very expensive. And if you made your, if your phone call lasted more than three minutes, it went up a lot in price. So the idea was to keep the phone call short and it had a little egg timer, you turn it over. And once the sand got near the, uh, almost all the way through, then I knew it was time to end the phone call. But we're not talking about that today. We're talking about how we can use this concept, this idea, this image of a, an egg timer to help our preparation. So. How might we do that? Well, first of all, let's talk about what happens with the top half of the egg timer. So here we are in the top half, and what are we putting into there? As we study and prepare for a sermon, we're putting in there all the things like our own observations on the passage. So you read the passage, you think about it, and you put in your, you write down your notes as to your own observations. Then you'd have things like commentaries. So let's see, I've got a nice big pile of books here. We will have to begin with where we should start. We should start with, again, our own observations on the text. Use the Bible, make your own notes. That goes in the top half of your egg timer. That's some of the sand that goes in there. And then we have commentaries. We read commentaries. We think about what they say, whether it's relevant, and we make notes, again, going into the top part of the egg timer. Uh, you might want to dip into the Greek and understand some of the Greek words. So, again, some notes on that. We'll go into the top half of your egg timer. What do we have here? The Lion Handbook to the Bible. A bit of background to, the, to some concepts in the text, some uh, history and background, perhaps atlases, maps, timelines, things like that. And maybe you might want to use a book like this, a Dictionary of Early Christian Beliefs. Let's say your text uh, is uh, on the communion, and so you might want to look up what the early Christians thought about communion, and uh, a book like that could be useful. So whatever books, whatever resources you're using, you take notes, and you put all that into the top half of the egg timer. So now you've got all your ideas and all your notes. Anything that illuminates the meaning of the Bible passage that you're going to be preaching on. Then, then we get to this final point. Before we let all this through, we have to decide what the main point is. And I think this is a bit like the final point of the egg timer. We've got all our notes, but it's got to get through something. And this is where, as we review our notes and our own ideas about the passage, we come to the core point of the lesson. Of course, every lesson must have one main point. It might have a number of supporting points, but it really should have one main point. And in the passage you're preaching on, one main point should be there. That one main point may vary. If you're speaking to a group of teenagers, it might be different from the main point if you're speaking to a group of senior citizens. Uh, uh, the one main point might be different if it's an evangelistic message. Depending on the context, your main point may vary, but there must be one main point. You've got your notes, you've got your main points, and now this provides the filter which tells you from what up here should you allow down into here, which will actually be the contents of your lesson. Now, of course, this is where the egg timer mo uh, metaphor breaks down a little bit, because then in egg timer, it just lets all the sand through. But let's imagine that this was a filter and you're deciding what should come through from this level down to this level and actually be the contents of your lesson. So we're letting through everything that's relevant to the main point. We're letting through everything that will be helpful to support and illuminate that main point there in your funnel. It's okay to leave some material up here. 
I don't know about you, but when I study for a sermon and I write down my ideas and notes, I get rather attached to all this information here. I get uh, actually emotionally attached to it. I've invested time and energy in finding these interesting things, and I find it difficult to let them go, leave them there, and only pull through into the bottom half the things that are most important. That's why this funnel and knowing what the main point of your lesson is, is so important. So only let through what is going to be important to support and illuminate the main point. And in the bottom half, what you're left with is the notes that are relevant, but you need to now add some things. What will you add to these notes? You will add, first of all, personal sharing. Some things from your own life or observations of things that you have seen and heard that will be relevant to support that main point and connect with the notes you've allowed through. Secondly, illustrations, which of course could include your personal sharing, but illustrations that support the notes you've got illuminating that main point. And thirdly, applications. How would this apply to your own life and to the lives of the people to whom you're speaking? How can they take something away? What might it be they take away that will be useful to them in their faith, their discipleship, their becoming a Christian, their understanding uh, what God is doing in their lives? What are some potential applications? So that's what you want to have in this bottom half now. Everything that's come through that's relevant, your own personal sharing, uh, illustrations and applications all go in here. Then when you've got all that, all you have to do is order it in such a way as to make sense. And that then is the outline of your sermon. So what do you think about this egg timer metaphor? Does it work for you? All the notes going in here, the main point being the filter. And then finally, your notes plus illustrations, applications and personal sharing. Use that for your structure. And hey presto, your egg timer has helped you to prepare a super sermon. So what do you think about that? What have I missed out? Uh, what would you add to what I have said? Do you have your own images and metaphors that help you to uh, work out how to prepare your sermons on your lessons? I would love to know. Please post a comment wherever you hear or see this recording. And of course, if you're listening to the podcast, you won't actually see the image of the egg timer, but I think you understand what I'm talking about. So what do you think? Leave a comment uh, and so we can all learn from one another because we, all, we learn best when we learn in community. And please do me and everybody a favor and pass the link to this recording on to one other person. If you're listening to the podcast, please rate it in iTunes or wherever you may find it. Uh, not for my uh, benefit, but so that other people will be able to discover it. But pass it on. Well, I hope until the next time we meet or you listen to one of these podcasts or watch one of these videos, I hope you have a wonderful week and a terrific Tuesday. Take care and God bless.